Okay, thank you. Let us continue. Um, <clears throat> where was I? Mm. I was saying that um, you can use uh, your expertise or maybe since we are going to look at the business plan, the development of a business plan as well. Mm. If you master that business plan, many businesses need business plans because we need a business plan to apply for funding or to attract investors, to attract sponsors, and to also align our business activities uh, together. So we need a business plan. So if you master that chapter of developing a business plan is actually not a chapter, it's a topic inside a chapter. So if you master it clearly, you can render your services to various businesses. Maybe you also render your services to aspiring entrepreneurs. So you use your own brain and then you, 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 you go somewhere, you locate your office and then uh, you, you render your services there. So whoever comes and needs assistance with a, a business plan, you do assist them, you develop a business plan for them, and then you make a lot of money there. Or you can alternatively do the same thing I'm doing now. Uh, you, 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 you identify the opportunity, um, but the demand is highly on economics and also mathematics, including physical sciences and also chemistry. That is where the demand is, including accounting. Why am I leaving it out? And mathematical economics. Yes, that is where the demand is. Even philosophy, the demand is in a lot of things. So you can identify the opportunity. So you see many students are struggling in this module. So if I can assist them and I say, they pay, uh, say for instance, 150 per month, then I can be able to make something. So I'm taking risks. I am stealing uh, my time and then I dedicate a portion of my time to the students and then they are going to pay. So that is profit. You see, you are meeting their needs while you are also at the same time making profit. So that is another uh, uh, type of entrepreneurship. Uh, so why do entrepreneurs do what they do? The small business, the entrepreneurial process, which process should, should, which process do people follow before they could actually become entrepreneurs? Mm -hmm. And then we are also going to look at the summary. So on this slide, uh, we, 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 we are just introducing entrepreneur. They are telling you that entrepreneurs are the, the driving force behind the business organization. What they are trying to say there is that an organization needs an entrepreneur. An organization needs an entrepreneur in order 
to function properly in all angles or in all spheres or across all the business spectrums. Why is that the case? Because an entrepreneur is a person who's always willing to take risks, a person who is creative and innovative, a person who has the motivation to excel. When this person does things, he does things with the end in mind. So the entrepreneur is always positive in whatever they do. They have the internal locus of control. I'm still going to explain what I mean by that as we proceed. So these business organizations are nothing without entrepreneurs. That is why when we were looking at the diagram initially, when we were discussing that circular flow under the free market economy, we mentioned that the communities are selling the factors of production to the private enterprises. And one of the factors of production is entrepreneurial ability. So if now you are working, say for instance, you are working for the University of Limpopo here. Last year, we were hit uh, very hard by COVID-19. So we were forced to do things um, uh, 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 virtually. So most of the activities were forced to be done online. So even the way we were mentoring students, we had to be flexible or to respond to the change. So we introduced the online mentoring, which is the e-mentoring, the one I'm currently doing now. So we came up with the platforms before the university could even come with the online learning. So we resorted or we, we, we went to the e-mentoring. So that was because of the entrepreneurial skills or the entrepreneurial abilities. So we used them to our advantage to advance the university's operation. So can you see, even uh, 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 in ShopRite, they need an entrepreneur in order to improve their processes. Sometimes you find out that the way in which you are packaging processes is not even appealing or is not enticing. Therefore, an entrepreneur might come up with a way that is appealing to the uh, consumers so that they can also see your product as being attractive or persuasive. So an organization is nothing without an entrepreneur. That is what they are trying to say there. And entrepreneurs are the ones, remember we said that these entrepreneurs are the ones who are identifying opportunities and then they embark on a business. So these people decide on what is needed or what product should be produced, how should that product be produced, by whom should this product be consumed or produced, and for whom are the products produced. Mm? That is an entrepreneur. Remember, before you can become an entrepreneur, you are supposed to conduct what we call CSAbility study. ability study, you check and then you will write ability there, such as ability. So feasibility study, why do you conduct this study? This study will help you identify, oh, I'm making noise. I, I even forgot it's, it's late. Feasibility study is just a study that is conducted to analyze the mega trends in the environment you seek to understand uh, the products that are currently in demand, the products that are being supplied in the market, who is supplying that product, how are they supplying it, how are they producing it, which methods are they uh, using technology? If they are using te technology, what kind of technology are they using? What are the threats, opportunities, strengths, weaknesses? You conduct SWOT analysis, in order to understand what is happening in the market. So how is ShopRite selling this product? How are they selling their products to the people? For example, now you may find out that ShopRite has implemented this system that can scan goods and services all at the same time in the till, rather than uh, employing that cashier 
who will have to scan those goods and services one after the other using that machine. But then ShopRite has now employed that machine whereby you can scan everything all at once. So that is a threat to your business as well. So you should identify all those through your feasibility study. You understand. Then after understanding that, you, you now decide, what can I produce? How am I going to produce this? Remember, you should come up with a way, the fastest way of producing that particular product because it should be in the market as soon as possible. Look at how the Batu guy is doing now. He is flourishing in the market because of what? Because of um, being able to decide on what to produce, how to produce by whom, and so forth. So he saw a dire need of producing all those uh, 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 shoes. And his business is doing very well in the market. So that is part of entrepreneurship. Um, so we said entrepreneurship is someone who started a business with the aim of making a profit. That one I'm not going to overemphasize. They assume a risk of losing the resources. Particularly here, we are, our focus on taking risk is on finances. Remember, uh, uh, you cannot mobilize the resources without finances. Isn't it that we said money is not a factor of production, but it is direct, indirectly used in the production of goods and services because we use money to buy other goods, other factors of production, such as land. You use money to buy land. You use money to buy laborers, such as what we saw in the diagram that we did initially. You use money to purchase capital resources, such as machineries and et cetera. Mm? So that is taking financial risk. You don't know whether your business will succeed or not, but you are taking that risk. You are an entrepreneur. If you are stingy, you don't find yourself willing to take risk, financial risk, to be uh, precise or specific, just know you are not yet an entrepreneur. If you are an entrepreneur, you will use your money to bet on lotto, better bets, bet weight, and et cetera. You use your money, you say, I'm going to buy uh, the easy mix, and then I mix, I sell muffins. You are not sure if your muffins will be bought or not. You are not sure if you are going to bake the products that are desirable or not. You don't know. So that is taking risks. So as an entrepreneur, you also mobilize land. When we say you mobilize these resources, we are trying to say you are making them move. You make them be used in the production process effectively and efficiently. That is an entrepreneur. So you should go back to your villages or your townships or your cities or your suburbs. You, 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 you buy land or you, you, you acquire land and then you start uh, embarking on an enterprise day as an entrepreneur. And then this slide seems like it says it's not enough. The explanation was not enough. Um, so different concept of what an entrepreneur is. These are the different concepts of what an entrepreneur is, and we have touched upon all this, except what? We said they are creative, they are innovative, they have innovative ideas, they identify opportunities, they find resources to pursue uh, those opportunities for good, for, for, for financial gain. Is it that if you are now identifying the opportunity, you are saying, I want to uh, render a business, to render my services, maybe writing assignments for students, SSS, a part of what of what you want to start your business, you will need to gather the resources that you are going to use uh, to render those services. You get a study material, you need a place where you will be rendering those services. If you will be ordering them virtually, you will need data, you will need various platforms, you will need a device and et cetera. That is finding the resources. And then you take financial risks. Those resources are acquired through purchases. So should understand that. They bring about change, growth, and blah, 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 blah. On the last three points, what they are trying to say is that if now as an entrepreneur, I'm giving an example using the Batu guy. If I'm fast, please inform me so that I can be slow. Look at the Batu guy. Uh, how did he contribute to the economic growth? 
he started small. We, we also start somewhere, we start small. So never underestimate your ideas. If you have a business idea, embark on it. Put all your energy on it because an entrepreneur is a person who has the motivation to excel, like I said. And when you fail, you don't say, ah, they bewitched me, I know. They even bewitched my mother or my father, I know. No, an entrepreneur is a person who takes responsibility of the outcomes or the actions towards, I mean to say the, the, the actions towards the outcome of the business venture. So an entrepreneur, the Batu guy, as I was saying in, in, in summarizing the last three points there, the Batu guy, the Batu guy started small. He, I, he was creative and innovative. He identified opportunities. He found the resources to pursue the opportunities so that he can make profit. He took his financial risk. He took money from his pocket to acquire all the resources that were needed. And then in explaining the last three points, his business is now expanding. He has various uh, stores or branches across the country in all the provinces, if not in all the provinces, but he is developing uh, daily. So remember, he cannot be in all those branches at the same time. He will, he, he's paying tax. When you pay tax, you are contributing to the change, to the growth and the wealth in the economy. He is employing people. When you employ people, obvious, now money is not gonna be with you alone. Money will circulate. And when money circulates, we have economic growth. Money is now moving from, from your pocket to the pocket of what? Of your employees. Your employees will also take the, the money to purchase goods and services from the, fine, from the private enterprise, just like we discussed in the first diagram before and so forth. Money is moving that way. So the entrepreneurs are contributing in the economy that way. When you employ people, when you create jobs for them, you are going to pay them and then the economy is re-energized. So that is the summary of the last uh, three points there. You know, an entrepreneur starts, runs and manages the businesses. So this one here is not that important, but they are saying what is important here is that uh, an entrepreneur, entrepreneurship in South Africa, um, okay? Entrepreneurship revolution is creating life-changing new businesses. So we come up with new businesses that change the lives of other people. The Batu guy came with the idea, the business idea, which what, which changed the lives of people. So now people are looking good uh, in those Batu shoes. And then they even feel like they are the Mercedes of the campus, or maybe they are the Jay-Z's of South Africa, the Beyonce's of South Africa, or something like that. And then he also changed the lives, the livelihood of the people. Because when you hire people, you are going to pay them. When you pay them, they are now able to afford the things they couldn't afford before. That is changing the life of someone else. And it has contributed towards a decline in the unemployment figure. That is why if you start agriculture, if you, you start your own business, particularly in the agricultural sector, you will see the government will come to you running. They will say, we want to fund you. Or you start your own agricultural business and then you apply for funding from the Department of Agriculture. They will definitely fund you. Why? Because they know entrepreneurship uh, uh, contributes towards the decline in the unemployment figure because you are not going to depend on government for employment. You will be starting your own business. You manage it, you manage it. once it grows bigger, you employ other people, now you are contributing towards a decline in the unemployment rate. Hmm? Are we still together? Yes, yes sir. Okay. So, we, I also said that yes, let's disable the mic. I also said that entrepreneurship brings motion or mobilizes the factors of production. I'm not going to overemphasize that. Uh, this is just a history of entrepreneurship. Growth in South Africa has declined over the, the GDP growth rate of 6%. Ah, that is not important. So I'm skipping that slide. Uh, the role of entrepreneurs and small business owners in the society. 
what role do entrepreneurs and small business owners in the society play? So we said, you know about entrepreneurs, you know what they do in the economy. They re-energize the economies, they create employment for people, they mobilize factors of production, they contribute towards the enhancement or the betterment of the livelihoods of the people. All these rules are not inclusive. They don't end here. So there are other roles of entrepreneurs. They create employment for people. And if people are employed, their standard of living will improve or their livelihood will, will improve. And then again, they contribute towards the infrastructural development. Because if now, as an agricultural entrepreneur, I am farming, I am practicing farming, my products should be taken to the market after being produced. And I need stable roads. I need roads that favor all environmental conditions. When it's raining, I must be able to take my tomatoes to the market because if not, my product might get rotten. Once they get rotten, it's a loss. And we don't, need, we don't want a loss in the economy. Therefore, it calls for the infrastructural development, meaning that we'll need the tar roads, the storage facilities, the malls, the spaza shops, and etc. where those products will be, will, be, will be sold. So that is the contribution towards infrastructural development and etc. So the small business owners satisfied with some autonomy. When we talk about autonomy, we talk about self-dependence. You depend on your own, but is that possible? No, you don't depend on your own. You need other sectors to depend or to, 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 to do what? To, 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 to sustain your business. The end reasonable income, no intention of the black. That is not important for me. So you will read through those. These things should come from your mind. You know, entrepreneurs, you don't have to read in the book. What role do you think entrepreneurs are playing in the economy or in the country? They employ people, eh? They also meet the needs of the society, meaning that they loosen the burden on the government. Hmm? They are also decreasing the number of people who are dependent on government. They are also contributing to economic growth because when we talk about economic growth, we talk about the production of better uh, goods and services. Yes. The production of better, of many and better goods and services. <laughs> the production so, of better, yes. So can we say the have the ability to reduce inflation. How so? So it, when you were talking about inflation, you said it's caused by the scarcity of money or something like that. Yeah. Now by them paying their employees, they're reducing that curve because money won't be that scarce anymore. No, I, didn't, I did not say as a, a inflation is caused by scarcity of money. I said, if we are now supplying more money in the economy, we will have inflation. Because remember, if everyone has money now, so businesses will, will, will think, hey, these people are the multiples. What will they do? They will increase the prices of product because everyone oh. has now, you see? Therefore, if the prices are increasing, we have inflation. The general prices, we have inflation. Do you get it? Yes, sir. Yes. Now I get it. Yes. So, um, why do entrepreneurs do? Yes, China Lufuno. Say. Yes. I think. I think. Ne, what is um? If sorry, if it's a she though, I think why what he is asking is that like, won't it reduce inflation? Because let's take it for instance. Um, I'm producing tomatoes and you're also producing tomatoes. Ne? Yeah. That means there'll be too many I mean, tomatoes. Therefore, the, that will reduce um, the cost of tomatoes. Uh, that, yes, Won't I, it be I, like that? Yeah, I understand that, but that cannot be justified given the sense that if now we are, we are able to supply more into that market, yeah, did we consider the level of demand? 
How many people are demanding that product? What if the demand is still higher than the supply? And then remember, okay, sir. yeah, yeah. Remember, there are also uh, fact, there are also factors that should be considered in the production level. That entrepreneur might have uh, incurred a lot of costs, and in order to realize profits, you should charge your prices higher so that you can cover the production cost. And if your prices are higher, and then remember, when you talk about inflation, we don't only talk about one product having its price increasing. We talk about all the products in the economy. That is why we are saying inflation is the general increase in the prices of goods and services. So entrepreneurs alone okay, sir, cannot sir. reduce the inflation rate. Yes? So here's another example, sir. Yes. So I am one individual producing a lump sum of tomatoes, like a lot. So, yes. so I'm making a lot of money, which minuses money from the economy. Won't that reduce inflation? Uh, no, it, 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 it won't necessarily reduce inflation because inflation is particularly affected by the macroeconomic factors not the microeconomic factors. Remember, at the macroeconomic level, whereby we are now looking at the economic problems, such as inflation, we look at the aggregated demand and the aggregated supply. Not only the supply from one individual, we look at the supply from all, the totalized supply, the supply from all suppliers in the market. If your company is now the only firm that is able to supply more than enough in the market, but other firms are struggling, therefore, the aggregated supply will be low. And therefore, it cannot contribute uh, to the GDP. It, 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 yes, it does contribute to the GDP, but the, 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 the level to which it is contributing is less. And in that way, you alone cannot reduce inflation. Inflation is reduced by macroeconomic factors, not microeconomic factors. In microeconomy, we look at the individual behavior, just like you as an entrepreneur being able to produce more or to supply more into the market. We don't care. Even if you are supplying billions and, and, and centrillions, quadrillions, and etc., but we are looking at the total, like the aggregate, you and other firms. And in that way, if all of you are able to do that and the GDP level, the contribution of the GDP is better, is at a, 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 a good standard, then uh, we have a, a, a decrease in, in, in inflation. And it's not only one factor that uh, reduces the inflationary measures. The, it, a combination of, of factors, the standard of living, economic growth, and etc., the employment level as well, the balance of payments as well. There are a lot of things that are considered. The, 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 we also mentioned the issue of money supply. So all those things are contributing towards what? Inflation. Because they are macroeconomic factors. Do you understand? Uh, now we understand. Yeah. So the reasons behind individuals initiating or starting their own businesses, why do entrepreneurs do what they do? Why does that Batu guy do what he does? It is because of the traits or the characteristics that he has, the skills and the competencies or the experience he has, and also the opportunity that outsourcing has to offer. When we talk about outsourcing, we talk about you as a business uh, going out to get other services that may assist your business, but you are focusing on your primary objective of your business. I will give an example using the university in terms of outsourcing. In the university, the university, you know, we are left with less than what? Less than uh, 10 minutes again. You will have to join again for the last time. Now I mean it, it will be for the last time because I want us to finish this chapter tonight. So um, 
what what was I saying? In the university, the university has outsourced other services such as the cleaning, the security, and the what the the the, the, the uh, greeneries and etc. So that is outsourcing. You outsource. You get other services from other institutions so that you don't deviate from your focus. If your business is focusing on maybe manufacturing cell phones, it shouldn't shift its focus to maybe say, eh, eh, we are now also focusing on cleaning or whatever. Because if they do so, they will be hither and thither, and then they will end up realizing lower productivity. So the reason we outsource, such as the cleaning, don't you ever think those mafukos, the clean tech, and, 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 and those women who are working there at the university have been, are actually uh, performing the duties, I mean, they are actually doing what the university is doing. They are rendering cleaning services which the university has outsourced. The security services the university has outsourced from the security company named Mafogo. So that is what they talk about when they say outsourcing. You get the sources outside your business. So entrepreneurs do what they do because of this three. We do what we do because of our traits or characteristics, the skills that we have and the experience and then the opportunities that outsourcing has to offer. If now we have the cleaning companies, they are willing to provide cleaning companies for us or maybe my, I, I, I'm starting a business of doing what, of, um, let's say, of, of recycling uh, plastics. So I can outsource the transportation services. We go and collect or gather the plastics together. We put them there. And then we don't, we, 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 we don't deviate from our focus or we don't normally go out and collect Actually, if our company is mainly dealing with the recycling of, 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 of uh, what we call the plastics, you don't have to go out and collect on your own. You, 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 you hire people to go there and collect on your behalf. While in your business, your business is busy operating or recycling those companies. So you outsource other things. So those are the opportunities. You look at the opportunities. If now you are saying, I want to be an entrepreneur and because in my community, there's no recycling company, I want to start a recycling company. You start your recycling company, your focus, your primary focus is on recycling. You should never deviate from that. You should focus solely on recycling products. Leave the rest to other companies. They will transport those to you and then you recycle. So, those are the opportunities. And then um, entrepreneurs traits and, and, and characteristics. This one, they like this ones in the test or in the exam. They say discuss the traits and the characteristics of, enter, of entrepreneurs. Uh, they are many. They, they have achievement motivation. Uh, 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 achievement motivation, it means that they are motivated to achieve whatever they want to achieve. If now I say I want to start this company as an entrepreneur, you would be highly motivated to achieve that business. You would definitely want to own that business. That is achievement motivation. Internal locus of control is one of the characteristics and traits. And in the test, you are not only going to mention this, you should explain. When we say an entrepreneur has an internal locus of control, we mean to say they take charge or they take responsibility on their action. They don't say, uh, now if they start a business and then it fails, they don't say, ah, I knew it. They have bewitched me. They don't do that. Entrepreneurs just say, oh, it's because I did this. It's because I wasn't energetic enough. It's because uh, these resources were lacking and so forth. That is internal locus of control. You, 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 you are saying whatever outcome you are experiencing or you are seeing is not as a result of witchcraft or your ancestors or whatever, but it is because of your actions. 
So that is having internal locus of control. Innovation and creativity, you know, innovation and creativity, when you innovate is when you improve the process, the way in which your business is doing things. If the university was teaching uh, students manually or they were having contact lesson before, they were using chalks and then now you are being innovative in a sense that you want to improve the way they do things. You say they can use that uh, pen that we can use. I don't know. I don't know what you call it. You can just write on a screen of your laptop. I see. I saw other lecturers using it when we were still attending on campus. So you just write on your screen, and then students see it projected on the board. You don't have to use a chalk. Ha, chalk So you are you are being innovative that way because you are improving the processes, the way in which things are done. And then being creative means that you are also. Uh, adding value to how things were also done before. Now they are no longer using chalks, they are using a uh, whiteboard and the markers and etc. And then uh, you can also be creative in a sense that you do what? You improve the packaging of a particular product or you, you, you apply what we call facadism on the building of your enterprise so that it can attract the customers. Because at times, Customers are attracted by the colors or by the way in which your business is being marketed. That is creativity and innovation. Sometimes you go to town, you, you find a, 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 I mean, so even if it's not in town, in, 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 in I don't know, yes, you find uh, what they did, the KFC has a, a container, that container with that a old man and then sometimes they also uh, have a drumstick inside that container but that drumstick is not there that is creativity because it's part of marketing and then you also go somewhere you will find someone maybe on the tar road they draw a container of chips uh, and then they also write that m for mcdonald's is it mc or m whatever it is so on the tar road that is part of marketing and it comes as a result of creativity. Creativity and innovation are one of the characteristics and traits of entrepreneurs. So they are risk taking, they take financial risks particularly. They, they, they use their money to employ the factors of production, not knowing whether their business is viable or not. They don't know whether their business will succeed or not. That is being able to take risks. The other traits, the high level of energy, the confidence and optimism and so forth. You will read through those. High tolerance for ambiguity. What they mean there is that you tolerate ambiguity in the market. Consumers will come with uh, various behaviors. The other one will come and insult you today. The other one will come and appreciate you for what you are. The other one will say your products are not looking good. The other one will say your products are looking good. So there are double meanings in the market. So you tolerate that double meaning as the, 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 the entrepreneur. That is one of the traits of an entrepreneur. When they say you are flexible or adaptable, they are trying to say you adapt to the change in the environment. If um, a, a people want to consume, they no longer want to consume a raw tomato, they want to consume tomato sauce, you are flexible, you react to that. You are no longer selling the raw tomato, you process it further into tomato juice, tomato sauce, tomato puree, or tomato paste, according to what consumers are, are, are in need of. So that is being flexible. If uh, 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 it, 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 it rains more than enough and it calls you to change a crop, you do so, you are flexible. So that is important. Uh, motivation to excel, I have explained. So we are left with less than a minute. We are going to join uh, the session after and then you will ask questions if you have them. So less than one minute, maybe I can explain this last slide here. Entrepreneurial skills and industry experience, the skills. Uh, okay, we'll explain when we get back. We'll be given three minutes. By 13 past, we should be continuing. <laughs> 